So what failed in this 2017 prophecy of the end of the world? What signs did these people use to determine 2017 as the date? Well, one of the things was blood moons. You can read about those in the Bible in Acts 22 verse 20, but the Bible doesn't state that the blood moons mark the exact date, only that it marks the time is near. Uh, perhaps it's during this generation. It's in other words, soon, but it doesn't set a date. Then there was the sign of Jonah mentioned, but again they tied it with the blood moons. And actually the sign of Jonah is three days and three nights, 72 hours, referring to how long Christ would be in the tomb. And that actually points to another tradition which has failed, which is Good Friday, because there's not 72 hours between Good Friday and Sunday resurrection. Another tradition that doesn't match up with the Bible. And then another reference was Revelation 12. They talked about Virgo, the Virgin, the constellation in the sky, with the blood moons, and they talked about planet X and planet 9 and the 12 stars all being aligned. Uh, again, it's, it's speculation based on physical things, but actually the context of the Bible is different. In Revelation 12, it talks about a crown, a crown of 12. And 12 in Hebrew is a complete number, a complete number of the created hosts, the angels. In Hebrew, like the number seven and the number 1,000, the number 12 is also a special number to represent perfection, completeness, and wholeness. The woman represents all those betrothed to God, the bride. We read in Hebrews 12, 22 to 24, and I'll read that. Hebrews 12, 22 to 24. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the myriads of angels, and to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant. So what we have are the sun, a great light of God, Psalm 104.2, along with the 12 legions of angels. In Matthew 26, verse 53, I'll read that. Matthew 26, verse 53. Or do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and he will not at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? Again, in reference to 12, a crown of 12 stars on Virgo, not just 12 stars scattered next to the constellation. And it's a crown. The moon at her feet represents the bride's authority over the lesser light, all those who presume to be God. Historically, the crown was seen by the Jewish people as representing the 12 tribes, each of which took one of the signs of the zodiac, the 12 constellations, to be their tribal standard. 12 is a Hebrew number which represents fullness or completeness, complete power and authority, the full number of the host of heaven, all the angels created by God. The 12 legions of angels referred to by God in Matthew 26, verse number 53. The woman is seen as those betrothed to God, the bride, and from her will come the Savior, which will provide the path for all those who trust in the Savior to be restored into a relationship with God after being separated and cast out of heaven due to sin. Adam and Eve were the first couple chosen to begin the reconciliation. Of the 12 stars, one third of the host of heaven, the angels, disobeyed God. Adam and Eve are the examples. And these are all cast out of heaven to earth. They all must be birthed into this flesh age to live and to die, to have an opportunity to reconcile with God and to be saved by Jesus. We'll go into this more detail if you want in the book uh, uh, Eden to Evil. And also and I have another book here which covers the same things, uh, God's Plan, Satan's Plan. God's Plan, Satan's Plan. And there, you can see them at uh, targettruthministries.com. Now, 12 represents the full number, the complete number in Hebrew of all the hosts of heaven, not just Israel, but 12 includes all the angels of heaven. In Hebrews 12, verses 22 to 24, it refers to myriads of angels, the general assembly enrolled in heaven, the spirits of the righteous made perfect by Jesus, which includes both Jews and Gentiles. 
In Deuteronomy 32, verses 7 to 9, it tells us that we are to remember how God gave the various foreign nations their boundaries according to the number of the angels of God that fell, in addition to a portion for Jacob. You need to check your biblical notes. The correct reading of Deuteronomy 32, verses 7 to 9 is angels of God, not sons of Israel. In Revelation 7, verse 13, it tells us that in the end times, that in addition to the 12 tribes of Israel, that, the, that a number of all the nations is also selected. And Revelation 12, verse 17 states, not only Israel, but also the rest of the women's children who are true to Jesus, the 12 stars, all the host. Jesus also helps us understand that 12 is actually a reference to the complete number of angels, not just Israel, but all nations. In Matthew 19, and Matthew 20, and Mark 10, and Luke 13, Jesus tells the disciples who were asking about the rewards that many are first, uh, many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. In other words, even Gentiles, who are not among the twelve tribes of Israel, will share equally in the kingdom of God. Twelve is a complete number in Hebrew, which includes Israel, but is not limited only to Israel. Jesus in parables gives us a clear picture of the host of heaven, the myriads of angels being more than just Israel. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 32, Jesus speaks of all nations, some sheep from other nations. In John 10, verse 16, Jesus tells us that he has other sheep also. Now next, we'll see how these traditions can lead us down some crazy paths. <music>